closer, please. That expires in one week. You're not real FBI, are you? I'm still in training at the Academy. The FBI has had a starring role in our culture for decades now. That scene is from the 1991 movie, The Silence of the Lambs, with Anthony Hopkins and Jodie Foster. On the screen, the FBI rarely fails to track down and capture wrongdoers. Yet, with its 100th birthday just a few days off now, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is under no small amount of scrutiny itself. Our cover story is reported now by Rita Braver. The FBI in peace and war. Drama, thrills, action. For the past century, the FBI has made its name rounding up bad guys. This was John Dillinger. Bank robbers. Kidnappers. A concealed camera in the next office took these incriminating pictures. Spies. And mobsters. And for bringing persons to justice who have committed some of the most unspeakable crimes that uh, have taken place over the last century. So then I but FBI I Director my, Robert Mueller acknowledges answer. that the Bureau today is at a turning point. Uh, we have uh, briefings on counterterrorism uh, early in the morning. In the wake of September 11, 2001, the FBI has made terrorism its top priority. It's no longer mostly about tracking down criminals after they've committed crimes. It's about stopping terrorist acts before they happen. It may be a little bit more difficult and difficult in different ways than uh, what we have been successfully doing in terms of investigating crimes over the last hundred years, but it's, it's our mission. We will do it and we'll be successful at it. But Americans are watching to see if the FBI is really up to the new challenge. FBI men shoot only in self-defense. It's a far cry from the old shoot-em-up days of the past, seen in these recreations from an old FBI film. It all started with a small investigative unit in the Justice Department during Theodore Roosevelt's presidency. But it wasn't until J. Edgar Hoover was brought in that the modern-day bureau took shape. May I emphasize that the Federal Bureau of Investigation is as close to you as your nearest telephone. It belongs to you. When Hoover took over in 1924, the Bureau was mired in that political scandal of the day, Teapot Dome. The Secretary of the Interior was going to jail because of bribe taking. The Attorney General had just been uh, asked to resign. A special agent must be a good marksman. FBI historian John Fox says that Hoover quickly moved to strengthen the Bureau and burnish his own image. Who were some of the big names that the FBI was able to get? Well, the FBI emerged in the 1930s as a nationally known organization because of its fight against gangsters like John Dillinger, like Babyface Nelson and Pretty Boy Floyd, you know, all those guys with the cool nicknames. It was a gangster, Machine Gun Kelly, who gave FBI agents their cool nickname, as Walter Cronkite described in this 1957 CBS broadcast. When FBI agents closed in on him, he whimpered, don't shoot, G-Men. Kelly was soon forgotten, but the name G-Men stuck. Over the years, J. Edgar Hoover became preoccupied with something other than gangsters. The communists have been, still are, and always will be a menace to freedom, to democratic ideals, to the worship of God, and to America's way of life. FBI critics charged that it was Hoover's obsession with communists and those he called moral degenerates that led to the FBI's domestic spying program. Do you feel the nation is in trouble? I think very definitely it is. The Bureau kept files on and harassed high-profile Americans, including Dr. Martin Luther King. I, I think that it is something that, that we do regret. Um, it is something that really shows where, where we should not be going. In fact, the FBI has long struggled to balance conducting investigations with protecting civil liberties. It is something that resounds today in the fight against terrorism. Do you worry that you're going to round up the wrong people of course, in a way to get the right people? Of course, always do. But I, I would take exception to the word round up. We do not 
round up. We uh, are very careful to assure that we have an adequate basis uh, to make an arrest of any individual. And yes, I worry about it because the credibility of the FBI is absolutely essential to our success. Is the line ready? And intrinsic to that success is the quality of FBI agents. Some of their training at the Bureau's Academy in Quantico, Virginia, has changed little over the years. But there are more women now, about 20 percent, and more minorities, again 20 percent. The suspect must be advised of the right to remain silent. Agents are schooled in following the letter of the law in interrogations. There is new focus on counterterrorism training, too. But to some, whether the FBI should be the front line against domestic terrorism is an open question. The FBI, while it's made some progress, um, is still, by, by the assessment of most outside experts, far behind where it needs to be. Eric Lischblau is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter for the New York Times and author of a recent book on the Bush administration and the law. Why can't you just apply the same skills that you had in the FBI to disrupting organized crime to catching terrorists? I think it's a whole different science. I think it requires much more in the way of analytical skills. Uh, it requires cultural understanding of, of Middle Eastern ways. It requires linguistic and language skills, a lot of skills that the FBI just doesn't have even now, seven years later. To a lot of Americans, it feels like the FBI was kind of slow to pick up on terrorism as a major threat to this country. I, I, I dispute that. Uh, if you look at uh, the successes of the FBI in New York and bringing to justice those responsible for the 1993 uh, bombing of the World Trade Center, uh, the work that was done to investigate and indict individuals responsible for the East African bombings and the coal bombing. Uh, the Bureau had done a, a substantial work in addressing terrorism. Eight Muslim fundamentalists are arrested in New York. In the early 90s, the FBI did run an undercover operation that disrupted a plot to bomb bridges and buildings in New York. But when it came to September 2001, there were a handful of situations where the FBI certainly had information uh, in its own files that could conceivably have, have altered the events of 9-11. The lack of coordination and communication between the FBI and the CIA um, led to the, the failure to, to identify them. And while the Bureau helped pioneer fingerprinting, DNA analysis, and sophisticated forensic evidence techniques, it has lagged far behind in computer technology. There are stories about how uh, on 9-11 the FBI was literally unable to send, uh, to send files to it, to, from its Florida offices to Washington with images of the hijackers. They had to overnight them. One of the complaints has been that the FBI had a lot of information and wasn't able to connect the dots. Well, I, I, I think that's a fair criticism, and so we had to put into place those capabilities. The FBI is still struggling to update its computer system and to improve communication with the CIA and other agencies. Suggestions remain that the Bureau should just stick to combating traditional crime. You know, the FBI's whole mission is still in question, uh, and, and there's serious doubt even now about whether or not they're up to the task of, of uh, remaking themselves to prevent the next terrorist attack. Over the past hundred years, uh, we've done, I, I believe, a very good job of But Mueller insists that the FBI is proving its worth every day. I, I think we have done a very good job since September 11th in assuring the safety of the American public from uh, particularly from terrorist attacks, both uh, domestic and international. But every time I say that, I knock on wood, because I know it's uh, we can expend our efforts. Uh, but uh, I, to a certain extent, there is uh, happenstance in there. What keeps you up at night? Uh, if you're asking about what I worry most uh, about, it is uh, weapons of mass destruction in the hands of some terrorists, if not today, tomorrow, or a few weeks, or months down the road. Mueller says the Bureau's agents and analysts are working intensely to stop such an attack before it happens. In addition, they're staying focused on other law enforcement tasks, including locking up mobsters, 
and tracking down spies who sell state secrets. Robert Mueller says that after 100 years, the FBI has to be able to do it all. It's never ending. I mean, the threats of today uh, are not necessarily the threats that you're going to see five, ten years down the road. And what you want to do is put the FBI in a posture where it is able to identify those threats as early as possible and move resources to address them immediately.